So, um, welcome back um, for the late afternoon session before we go for the evening event. We have some really, really nice presentations. We will start now with the lightning talk session. Uh, we have a little bit more time this, uh, this year as we have only two speakers, not three. So, if anybody has a question, I think two or three we can have after the talks. We will start with Werner Fischer. He is uh, responsible for the product security at server manufacturer Thomas Crenn. And he's also continuously analyzed new technologies within the scope of his work. He's also a regular speaker at many conferences and is also the chief editor of Thomas Crenn Wiki. He will tell us something about microcode updates as protection against Spectre and Co. So, your stage. Okay, so first question, do we have to start at 10 minutes counter or will it start again on its own? Okay, never mind, I can start this way either. So welcome in the afternoon here for the talk microcode updates against, okay, great, now it is counting, uh, as protection against Spectre and yeah, some other security issues. I didn't mention all of them because the list is not ending and I'm sure that there will be some more in the future. So in the following 10 minutes, we will look at some kind of bugs. And I think all of you know that there are different kinds of bugs, mainly three of them. First kind, I hope you don't have to cope with them, are the bugs who attack your house. Um, I won't cover them in detail in the 10 minutes because this would take some other more time here. And bugs which attack software and bugs which attack hardware. Those two are the ones which I will cover here. So for bugs attacking software, it's a relatively easy task for the software developer when there are some kind of bugs in the software. Somebody reports the bugs um, and they get to know it. I can issue an update, provide the update. Now it is online via the internet, not via diskets anymore. Uh, but it's, yeah, very easy uh, way to fix the things here. How about hardware? What can you do when you have issues with your hardware? Um, Anybody of you know the FDEY issue? Okay. Anybody born after 1994? <laughs> okay, ah, okay, you cannot know it, okay. So, um, in 1994, Intel had some bug in the hardware, and those, in those days, what was the solution? They announced a lifetime replacement policy, and uh, said, okay, there is some issue here, and in case you have the bug and you want to fix it, you can get this new spare processor on there. For some kinds of bugs, it's still the case. So if you have a Logitech presenter here, um, it may be happened that you have an update for the hardware too. But we're looking at processors here. So what did Intel do? We have an issue in the hardware and they did some replacement program. But with the Intel Pentium Pro processor, they said, okay, I have some real nice idea. We can provide some kind of software updates for the hardware. So they began to provide microcodes for the CPU. What do they do here? Okay, they want to get some features from the software and provide updates to the hardware in form of microcode update. And the question which arises here is, um, what kind of permanent storage does a CPU have to store this kind of software? Any ideas? Where can a processor store some kind of microcode? Yes? None. None. That's correct. Yeah, there's no possibility because there's no permanent storage in the processor. So what's the solution? Back in 1999 and 1995, it was let's store the microcode in the BIOS. And where have we gone 20 years later? Nowhere is still the same situation. The microcode is still in the BIOS, and we still have BIOSes like 20 years ago, and yeah, that's the case. So, what happens here? You have a microcode included in the BIOS, and in the year 2019, today, with still the same situation, you can see it on the right side here, when you analyze a BIOS firmware file, you see that there are different kinds of microcodes in there for different kind of CPUs. So you see, for example, that some kind of motherboard supports different kinds 
of CPUs. And we see, okay, for most of them, there's the most current update provided here, for some of them, none. Okay, that's the, the situation on here. What happens when you power on a system? First, you power it on. The system does its power on self test, does the update of the microcode, and then starts the OS. So, a very straightforward process here. But one thing that comes often to my mind and also to many others who of you likes BIOS updates? <laughs> Three, four, who of, who of you likes software updates? Who of you doesn't want to do any update? <laughs> okay, that would be the, the, the perfect world, but we know we don't live in a, in a perfect world, maybe in someday in the future, but today we don't live in a perfect world. But although there are not many people like, uh, like having um, software updates, there are even more than those of you who want to do BIOS updates. So to get it in a more convenient way, let's uh, twinkle the point three and four and start the OS and then do the microcode update. And that's really the thing which we can do here. So when you have, for example, some Linux system or some other kind of operating system, uh, you can scan your system and uh, watch out, okay, which microcode version you have and which CPU ID you have. And for example, when it comes down to processors from Intel, you can say, okay, I have this kind of CPU and let's take a look at the most current version of the microcode update guidance and see, okay, what's the firmware version which I need to have the microcode version to get an issue fixed here. You can go to the Intel website, uh, download a microcode data file and include it in your operating system or even better, you can go to uh, the operating system vendor and download the microcode here. This example shows the DBAM package. They did some very good job because uh, Intel changed their license for the microcode and then Deben said, okay, we won't include it in our uh, distribution anymore. And so uh, they motivated Intel to revoke the license change and to make it more open again so now they can provide it in the non-free area, which makes it more convenient for the end user to update the microcode via the operating system. So what happens here is when you apply this package, you see in the uh, dmessage output uh, that the microcode update is done very early at the process of starting the CPU. So you see at the time counter that it really happens very, very early. And then you are ensured that you have the most current version of the microcode on there. How about other uh, operating systems, for example, FreeBSD? There are also some kinds of possible updates for the operating system there. And in this example, you even see that you get new uh, feature flags, new uh, microcode instructions for the processor to enable the operating system to get rid of some kind of security issues. So for this kind of update, you see you get the IBPP uh, commands here. And at the end below, you see, okay, the microcode has been updated. So it's very important to do the microcode update very, very early at the booting process of the operating system. Otherwise, uh, the operating system won't recognize the new um, instruction sets and then it cannot um, use those commands as well. Um, where can you look for microcode updates? There are some sources, some um, great sources, for example, from uh, Plato Mavropoulos, who is a firmware engineer and who analyzes the microcodes. You can use his tools. And for this example, you see sometimes it might happen that you discover a new microcode version within a BIOS, which you have downloaded from your Windows website. Uh, this may happen. Um, and then you are asked to provide the information about the new microcode back to him. So the question at the end is, Am I secure now when I'm using microcode updates via the operating system? Who of you thinks yes? Okay, who, who of you thinks no? Okay, so 
for many cases, you are secure in it using the, the microcode updates from the operating system, but it still depends because unfortunately there's not only the microcode which uh, can have security bugs, there are also some other kind of firmware components like the management engine or depending um, on the architecture, uh, service platform services or TXE, it just depends on the kind of usage scenario, it's the same kind of uh, firmware or the UEFI reference code, for example. For those kinds of things, you still have to do an update of the BIOS, but for all the other microcode stuff, um, it really helps to use the microcode update by the operating system, and you get those um, issues fixed here. So, update the microcode by the operating system. You're more safe than you would be when you do nothing, but still check for BIOS update because there might be some issues within the management engine. Too. That's it. Thank you very much. Microphone? Okay. Thank you very much, Werner.